Hello and welcome to lesson number four, where we will discuss the challenges hindering the effective implementation of telemedicine and how to overcome those challenges. Telemedicine has several challenges that must be addressed for telemedicine to be implemented effectively. In this lesson, we will discuss the key challenges facing telemedicine implementation, such as lack of or limited access to connectivity and technology, data privacy and security concerns, poor adoption by the intended users, licensing, regulations, and credentialing, and lack of standardization. We will also explore strategies to overcome these challenges, including improving internet connectivity, developing standardized guidelines and regulations, implementing robust security measures, investing in reliable technology, educating patients and staff, developing clear and consistent reimbursement policies, and implementing standardized guidelines and best practices. By the end of this lesson, you will have a better understanding of the challenges facing the effective implementation of telemedicine and the strategies that can be employed to overcome these challenges, ultimately leading to improved access to healthcare and better health outcomes for patients. Subtopic 1. Challenges Facing Effective Implementation of Telemedicine Telemedicine, the delivery of healthcare services using technology, has become increasingly popular due to the convenience and accessibility it provides. However, there are several challenges facing its effective implementation, including 1. Lack of or limited access to connectivity and technology. A major challenge in implementing telemedicine is the lack of access to technology particularly in rural or remote areas where internet connectivity may be limited. This is a major challenge that affects the implementation of telemedicine. Here are some examples of how access to technology can hinder the implementation of telemedicine. A. Limited internet connectivity. In many rural areas, internet connectivity may be limited or non-existent, making it difficult for healthcare providers to deliver telemedicine services. This can lead to poor video and audio quality, making it difficult for healthcare providers to diagnose and treat patients remotely. For example, a healthcare provider in a rural area may attempt to conduct a telemedicine appointment with a patient via video conferencing software, but the poor internet connection results in a lack of clarity, and it becomes challenging to provide quality care. B. Lack of necessary equipment. Telemedicine relies on specialized equipment, such as remote monitoring equipment, medical devices, and software. The lack of access to such equipment can make it difficult for healthcare providers to provide telemedicine services. For instance, a healthcare provider may require specialized equipment such as a digital stethoscope or a teledermatology camera to conduct a remote consultation, but due to the lack of access to such equipment, they may not be able to provide quality care. C. Difficulty in Operating Technology Telemedicine technology can be complex, and healthcare providers need to be trained on how to operate it. However, the lack of training and support can make it difficult for healthcare providers to use telemedicine technology effectively. For example, a healthcare provider may not be trained on how to operate a remote monitoring system, and it may lead to inaccuracies in the monitoring data which can ultimately lead to poor health outcomes. 2. Data Privacy and Security Concerns Telemedicine involves the exchange of sensitive patient information, which can be vulnerable to security breaches if proper security measures are not in place. This raises concerns about data privacy and confidentiality. Privacy concerns are a major issue in telemedicine implementation, as patients often share their sensitive medical information with healthcare providers remotely. Without proper safeguards, this information could be intercepted, accessed, or compromised by unauthorized parties, resulting in significant harm to the patient. For example, in 2020, the telemedicine platform Doxy.me suffered a data breach, exposing sensitive patient information such as names, email addresses, and session metadata. This breach resulted in patients' personal information being accessible to unauthorized parties, putting them at risk of identity theft and other forms of fraud. Security concerns also affect the implementation of telemedicine. 
telemedicine systems are vulnerable to cyber attacks, which could compromise the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of patient information. For example, in 2017, the WannaCry ransomware attack affected the UK's National Health Service, NHS, causing the cancellation of thousands of medical appointments and surgeries. This attack was possible due to the outdated software used by the NHS, which had numerous vulnerabilities that the attackers exploited. Furthermore, telemedicine also raises concerns about the potential for medical malpractice, as the lack of physical examination could lead to misdiagnosis or improper treatment. This is particularly relevant for certain specialties, such as psychiatry, where the patient's physical presence and body language are essential for accurate diagnosis. In conclusion, while telemedicine has numerous benefits, privacy and security concerns are significant challenges that need to be addressed. Healthcare providers must implement appropriate security measures, such as encryption, two-factor authentication, and regular software updates, to protect patients' sensitive information from cyber threats. Additionally, Patients should be educated on the risks and benefits of telemedicine and provided with the necessary information to make informed decisions regarding their health care. 3. Poor adoption by the intended users. Poor adoption by intended users can hinder the effective implementation of telemedicine. While telemedicine has the potential to improve access to care and reduce healthcare costs, it requires widespread adoption by both patients and healthcare providers to be effective. Here are some examples of how poor adoption by intended users can hinder the implementation of telemedicine. A. Lack of technology literacy. Many patients and healthcare providers may not be familiar with the technology required for telemedicine. This can create a barrier to adoption, particularly for older patients or those in rural areas where access to high-speed internet and technology may be limited. B. Resistance to change. Healthcare providers may be resistant to change, particularly if they have been practicing in the same way for many years. They may be hesitant to adopt new technologies or change their workflow to accommodate telemedicine. Some patients may also be hesitant to use telemedicine due to a lack of familiarity with technology or concerns about the quality of care they will receive. Providers must educate patients and address these concerns to encourage adoption of telemedicine. Lastly, some insurance companies and health insurance providers may not be willing to embrace telemedicine owing to costs concerns, or they may impose strict policies regarding telemedicine reimbursements or undertakings, which may not cover all services provided through telemedicine or may require higher copays. C. Limited patient demand. Patients may be hesitant to adopt telemedicine if they are used to traditional in person health care. They may prefer the face-to-face -face interaction and physical examination that comes with in-person visits. Poor adoption by intended users can hinder the effective implementation of telemedicine. Healthcare providers and policymakers need to address these concerns by providing education and training on the technology and benefits of telemedicine, improving reimbursement policies, and addressing privacy and security concerns to increase patient and provider confidence in the technology. 4. Licensing, Regulation and Credentialing All healthcare providers are subject to government licensing before they can be allowed to practice in the state or country where the patient is located, which can be a challenge for telemedicine providers who operate across the borders since each country or state will have different licensing requirements which may not be admitted in another region. This will mean that any provider seeking to operate telemedicine services across these borders would either apply for licensing or be denied access, with the disadvantages affecting two sides. On one side, patients are denied freedom of choice and possibly better health care, and on the other hand, the healthcare provider is denied revenue. Most people in many of the African countries would want to seek medical attention or second opinion from Indian doctors. Telemedicine would save the cost of travel and accommodation. However, the government would have to register and license the foreign doctors, as it should, for regulation. Additionally, credentialing and privileging requirements vary across different telemedicine platforms and healthcare settings. Many jurisdictions rank hospitals and healthcare providers differently. 
Differences in hospital rankings by jurisdictions can affect the provision of telemedicine in several ways. Hospital rankings are based on a variety of factors, such as quality of care, patient outcomes, patient experience, and financial performance. These rankings can impact how hospitals are perceived by patients, payers, and policymakers, which can in turn affect the provision of telemedicine services. Here are some examples of how differences in hospital rankings by jurisdictions can affect the provision of telemedicine. A. Patient demand. Hospitals with higher rankings may have a larger patient population and may be more likely to have patients who are willing to use telemedicine services. Patients may be more likely to trust hospitals with higher rankings and may be more willing to use their telemedicine services. B. Provider adoption. Hospitals with higher rankings may have providers who are more willing to adopt telemedicine services. Providers may perceive hospitals with higher rankings as being more innovative and may be more willing to try new technologies and care delivery models. C. Regulatory compliance. Hospitals with higher rankings may be more likely to comply with regulations regarding telemedicine. Higher-ranked hospitals may have more resources to dedicate to compliance efforts and may have a better understanding of the regulatory landscape. D. Partnership opportunities. Hospitals with higher rankings may be more attractive partners for telemedicine vendors and other healthcare organizations. These hospitals may have more resources, expertise, and patient populations to offer in partnership arrangements. 5. Lack of practice standardization. Lack of standardization is one of the factors hindering the effective implementation of telemedicine. Standardization is necessary to ensure that telemedicine services are safe, effective, and interoperable. Here are some examples of how lack of standardization can hinder the implementation of telemedicine. A. Technology Platforms Telemedicine services are delivered through a variety of platforms, including video conferencing, messaging, and mobile applications. Lack of standardization in these platforms can create interoperability issues, making it difficult for providers to share patient data and communicate with each other. B. Clinical Guidelines Lack of standardization in clinical guidelines for telemedicine can create confusion and variability in care delivery. Providers may have different interpretations of best practices for telemedicine, leading to inconsistent care and outcomes. C. Regulatory Standards Lack of standardization in regulatory standards can create challenges for healthcare providers and vendors seeking to implement telemedicine services. Regulations vary by state, and many providers may be unsure of which regulations apply to their telemedicine services. D. Data Security Standards Lack of standardization in data standards can make it difficult to collect and analyze data from telemedicine services. Providers may have different data collection methods and data fields, making it difficult to compare data across providers or regions. E. Training and Education Lack of standardization in training and education can make it difficult for providers to learn how to use telemedicine effectively. Providers may have different levels of training and education, leading to variability in the quality of care delivered through telemedicine. Lack of standardization is a significant barrier to the effective implementation of telemedicine. Standards are needed for technology platforms, clinical guidelines, regulatory standards, data standards, and training and education. Standardization efforts should focus on ensuring that telemedicine services are safe, effective, and interoperable to improve patient outcomes and increase the adoption of telemedicine. Overall, the challenges facing the effective implementation of telemedicine are complex and multifaceted. Addressing these challenges will require collaboration among healthcare providers, policymakers, and technology companies to ensure that telemedicine is accessible, secure, and effective for all patients. Subtopic 2. How to overcome these challenges facing effective implementation of telemedicine. To overcome the challenges facing effective implementation of telemedicine, there are several strategies that can be employed. 
1. Lack of, or limited access to connectivity and technology. Lack of, or limited access to connectivity and technology is a significant challenge in providing telemedicine services, especially in remote and underserved areas. However, there are several ways to overcome this challenge. Here are some examples. A. Mobile clinics. One way to overcome the lack of connectivity and technology is to use mobile clinics that can travel to remote areas. These clinics can be equipped with telemedicine equipment that can be used to provide virtual care to patients. For example, the national health insurance provider and relevant government institutions can implement the use of mobile telemedicine units which can be driven to the underserved areas to provide this service to the local people. B. Satellite and Wireless Technology Satellite and wireless technology can be used to provide connectivity to remote areas. Telemedicine equipment can be connected to satellite or wireless networks to provide virtual care to patients. C. Public-Private Partnerships Public-private partnerships can be used to provide connectivity and technology to underserved areas. Governments can partner with private companies to provide broadband connectivity and telemedicine equipment to remote areas. Examples of these partnerships exist where the government provides medical equipment to universities, schools, churches, or any other reputable private institutions with good internet connectivity and high level. Another example is where the government partners with telecos to provide connectivity to underserved areas thereby enabling private institutions to provide telemedicine services. D. Telemedicine Hubs Telemedicine hubs can be established in urban areas to provide virtual care to patients in remote areas. These hubs can be equipped with telemedicine equipment and staffed by healthcare providers who can provide virtual care to patients in remote areas. E. Use of low-tech solutions In some cases, low-tech solutions can be used to provide telemedicine services in areas with limited connectivity and technology. For example, Telemedicine consultations can be conducted via telephone or text message. In conclusion, lack of or limited access to connectivity and technology can be overcome by using mobile clinics, satellite and wireless technology, public-private partnerships, telemedicine hubs, and low-tech solutions. These solutions can help increase access to telemedicine services in remote and underserved areas and improve healthcare outcomes for patients in these areas. 2. Data Privacy and Security Concerns Data privacy and security concerns are significant challenges in telemedicine, as the protection of patient information is critical. However, there are several ways to overcome these challenges. Here are some examples. A. Use of encryption and secure communication Telemedicine providers should use encryption and secure communication protocols to protect patient information. This can include the use of secure video conferencing platforms, secure messaging systems, and encrypted storage of patient data. B. Implementation of access controls. Telemedicine providers should implement access controls to limit access to patient information to only authorized personnel. This can include the use of user authentication, role-based access controls, and audit trails to track access to patient data. C. Compliance with privacy regulations. Telemedicine providers should comply with privacy regulations as specified by each jurisdiction. This can include implementing policies and procedures to protect patient information, conducting regular security risk assessments, and training staff on data privacy and security best practices. D. Use of telemedicine-specific security measures. Telemedicine providers should use security measures specifically designed for telemedicine, such as remote wiping of devices in case of loss or theft, use of virtual private networks, VPNs, and implementing two-factor authentication. E. Collaboration with cybersecurity experts. Telemedicine providers should collaborate with cybersecurity experts to identify and mitigate potential security risks. This can include regular security audits, penetration testing, and implementation of security best practices. 
In conclusion, data privacy and security concerns can be overcome by using encryption and secure communication, implementing access controls, complying with privacy regulations, using telemedicine-specific security measures, and collaborating with cybersecurity experts. These measures can help protect patient information and ensure the safe and effective delivery of telemedicine services. 3. How to overcome the challenge of poor adoption of telemedicine by the intended users. Poor adoption of telemedicine by intended users is a significant challenge in the implementation of telemedicine. There are several ways to overcome this challenge. Here are some examples. A. Patient education. Patient education is essential to increase the adoption of telemedicine. Telemedicine providers should educate patients on the benefits of telemedicine, how to use the technology, and what to expect during a telemedicine visit. This can include providing patient education materials, hosting webinars or information sessions, and offering technical support. B. Provider training. Healthcare providers should be trained on how to use telemedicine technology and how to communicate effectively with patients during virtual visits. Providers should also be trained on how to address common concerns that patients may have about telemedicine. C. User-friendly technology. Telemedicine technology should be user-friendly and easy to use. Providers should choose technology that is accessible to patients and that requires minimal training. This can include using video conferencing platforms that are easy to navigate and that can be accessed from a range of devices. D. Integration with electronic health records. Telemedicine technology should be integrated with electronic health records, EHRs, to streamline the patient experience. Integration can help reduce the time required for data entry and improve the accuracy of patient information. E. Financial incentives. Financial incentives can be used to encourage patients to adopt telemedicine. This can include offering reduced copays or lower fees for telemedicine visits. Providers can also work with insurance companies to ensure that telemedicine visits are covered by insurance. F. Patient feedback. Telemedicine providers should seek feedback from patients to identify areas for improvement. Providers can use patient feedback to refine their telemedicine services and to ensure that they meet the needs of patients. In conclusion, poor adoption of telemedicine by intended users can be overcome by providing patient education, provider training, user-friendly technology, integration with EHRs, financial incentives, and patient feedback. These measures can help increase the adoption of telemedicine and improve access to healthcare services. 4. Overcoming the challenge of licensing, regulations, and credentialing to allow for a smooth implementation of telemedicine. Licensing, regulations, and credentialing are significant challenges in the implementation of telemedicine. However, there are several ways to overcome these challenges. Here are some examples. A. Regulatory compliance. Telemedicine providers must comply with state and federal regulations, including licensing and credentialing requirements. Providers should work with legal counsel to ensure that they comply with these regulations. B. Telemedicine-specific regulations. Telemedicine providers should advocate for telemedicine-specific regulations that reflect the unique aspects of telemedicine. This can include advocating for reimbursement policies that recognize the value of telemedicine and for regulations that allow for remote prescribing. C. Collaboration with regulatory agencies. Telemedicine providers should collaborate with regulatory agencies to ensure that regulations are clear, consistent, and fair. This can include providing input into regulatory rulemaking processes and advocating for changes to existing regulations. D. Credentialing and certification. Telemedicine providers should work with credentialing organizations to develop telemedicine-specific credentialing and certification programs. This can help ensure that providers are qualified to provide telemedicine services and can help build trust with patients. E. Public education. 
Telemedicine providers should educate the public on the value of telemedicine and the importance of regulatory compliance. This can include providing patient education materials, hosting webinars or information sessions, and partnering with patient advocacy groups. F. Collaboration with professional associations. Telemedicine providers should work with professional associations to develop guidelines and best practices for telemedicine. This can help establish standards for the delivery of telemedicine services and can help build trust with patients. In conclusion, licensing, regulations, and credentialing are significant challenges in the implementation of telemedicine. However, these challenges can be overcome by regulatory compliance, advocacy for telemedicine-specific regulations, collaboration with regulatory agencies, credentialing and certification, public education, and collaboration with professional associations. These measures can help ensure that telemedicine is implemented smoothly and effectively. 5. Strategies employed to overcome the challenge of lack of standardization in telemedicine. Lack of standardization is a significant challenge in the implementation of telemedicine. However, there are several strategies that can be employed to overcome this challenge. Here are some examples. A. Development of standards. Telemedicine providers should work with professional organizations to develop standards for telemedicine. This can include developing guidelines for the delivery of telemedicine services, standards for data exchange, and standards for telemedicine technology. B. Adoption of industry standards. Telemedicine providers should adopt industry standards for telemedicine technology, such as those developed by the International Organization for Standardization, ISO, or the Healthcare Information and Management Systems Society, HIMSS. C. Interoperability. Telemedicine providers should focus on interoperability, or the ability for different telemedicine systems to communicate with each other. Interoperability can help ensure that patient information is shared effectively and that telemedicine services can be delivered seamlessly across different platforms. D. Education and training. Telemedicine providers should educate healthcare providers on the importance of standardization and provide training on how to implement standardized practices. This can help ensure that telemedicine services are delivered consistently across different providers. E. Collaboration with stakeholders. Telemedicine providers should collaborate with stakeholders, including patients, healthcare providers, and technology vendors, to develop and implement standards for telemedicine. Collaboration can help ensure that standards are practical and effective. F. Research and evaluation. Telemedicine providers should conduct research and evaluation to determine the effectiveness of telemedicine standards and to identify areas for improvement. This can help ensure that standards are updated as needed and that they continue to meet the needs of patients and providers. In conclusion, the lack of standardization is a significant challenge in the implementation of telemedicine. However, this challenge can be overcome by developing standards, adopting industry standards, focusing on interoperability, education and training, collaboration with stakeholders, and research and evaluation. These strategies can help ensure that telemedicine services are delivered consistently and effectively across different providers and platforms. It is our belief that we have shed some light on this important topic. In this era of AI, we have to be prepared for these kinds of services as they are the future. If this video has provided you with knowledge, pay us with your subscription and comment. Remember to like and share the video as well. We will be back with another one of these topics for discussion.